Hey everybody, it's Ryan Daly coming at you again with another episode of Super Data Brothers. In today's episode, we answer a question from the comments. So Tim Sadler asked, the splitting function is quite useful, but one thing that I can't seem to do in data modules is group data. So a video on that would be useful. Well, Tim, ask and ye shall receive. Today's episode is all about data grouping in data modules. Let's take a look. All right, so I've got a data module open here. This is the Go Sales module, so you can follow along with this if you have the samples installed. And the first thing I'm going to group is going to be retailer type. So in this example, let's imagine we've got various retail channels that we want to group together, uh, create a custom grouping, custom buckets out of the values of retailer type. The easiest way to do this is to go into the More menu and then select Create Data Group. Now, Create Data Group came at some point in the Cognos 11 release stream. I don't remember exactly when. I don't think it was in the 11.1.0 release. So if you're on a version of Cognos and you don't see this, you probably just need to upgrade to a more recent version and then you'll have access to it. The first thing we do when we come into any of these features in data modules always is we give the column or object we're building a name. So in this case, uh, maybe we'll call this um, retailer channels. And the first channel we're going to want to create is specialty stores. So I'll click new group, and then I can put in here specialty channel. And what constitutes the specialty channel will be the stores that only sell one product type. So in this case, we're talking about eyewear, golf, outdoor shop, and sports stores. I can control click them to get them all at once. And then I click this add to group button. And you'll see it moves them from the left-hand column to the right-hand column into the group specialty channel. Now, the next group I might want to create is going to be big box stores. These are stores that sell lots of different types of products, our products just being one type that they have. So in the big box channel, we're going to put in department stores and warehouse stores. Okay? And you can see... Here are the members of the big box channel. Here are the members of the specialty channel. So it's really easy to keep track of what you've put where. Now these remaining items, maybe I want to group together or maybe I don't. In this case, I don't. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to leave the group remaining and future items in unchecked. If I were to check this, it would create a catch-all group for anything that wasn't um, that I hadn't manually added to a group. All right. In this case, I don't want to do that. The other option I have is to replace the existing column retailer type. So if I want the retailer type column to go away and the retailer channel column to take its place, I would click that option. But in this case, I don't want that. So I'll go ahead and choose create. And you can see here in the grid view, we've got the retailer type and um, uh, we, rather we've got retailer channel and it's bucketized them for us or grouped them. So equipment rental store, specialty, specialty channel, big box channel. We've got our channels grouped together. We've created that custom grouping, and it's as simple as that. Now, what if you're in a version of Cognos that doesn't have this feature, or you're using a data type for which this feature doesn't apply? One interesting thing is that the custom grouping feature isn't available if you're looking at uh, a data type of time, right? So um, if I look at date here, and I look in the properties, you'll see the data type is timestamp. And if I go to do custom grouping, it's not an option. So how do I overcome that? Um, well, let's take a look at how you can manually do this grouping using a case statement by looking at our product line column. So here in uh, products, with product line, I want to create product line groupings that don't exist in the underlying data. And in order to do that without using the custom grouping feature, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new calculation. So I click on the table where I want the calculation to live, and then I get the calculation option. And again, always, always, always give, give your things a name. Um, so maybe we'll call this um, you know, uh, product groups. And in the product groups, what you're going to do, and I'm just going to copy paste this rather than type it all out, um, but I'll explain what it is is you're gonna write a case statement. So the way the case statement works is it says case and the column that you want to do the logic on, in this case, product line. And then you're gonna do a when and then combination with the values that might exist in product line and what you wanna transform them into, into. So in this case, 
I want to take all of the outdoor gear product lines and put them together into a group called outdoor gear. I want to leave everything else the way it is. So I've got case product line. When the value of product line is camping equipment, then replace it with outdoor gear. When the value of product line is mountaineering equipment, replace it with outdoor gear. When it's outdoor protection, replace it with outdoor gear. Otherwise, leave it as it is. Leave it as the value of product line and then end, okay? That's the syntax you're gonna use here. These can get really complicated. This is a pretty simple one, but I've written some real monster case statements in my life. So let's go ahead and preview this and see if it's working. Uh, you click the preview button and you can see right away, I got the product line and the product group that I'm looking to create, and it appears to be putting them in the right buckets. So we should be good to go on this grouping. All right. Now those are the two ways to create groups in data modules themselves. There's a third way that I wanna show you uh, that actually can be done in dashboards. So let's go ahead and save this. Um, and then I'm going to swap over to a dashboard that I have open and we'll relink the model here. Always have to uh, relink. So whenever you make any changes, we'll relink to our model. And let's take a look at the third option for doing custom grouping. So where this comes in is actually on the visualization itself, as I mentioned. Um, and the way we can do that is let's build a Visualization, we'll do retailer type um, and maybe gross uh, profit. There we go, oh, gross profit, okay. Drag and drop in here. It's gonna automatically build the viz for me. Let's expand it to full screen. All right, so let's say I'm a dashboard user, I don't have access to data modules and I wanna create a custom group. Well, one of the ways I can do that in here is actually just by interacting with the visualization itself. So um, like we, the specialty store grouping that we did before, I can replicate that here by clicking on uh, sports store, outdoor shop, golf shop, and eyewear store. And then if I right click, you'll, choose, you'll see I have the create data group option. And here I can name these, um, I can name this specialty channel, okay? Create, the visualization is going to reload, and now I've got the specialty channel there. So this is only exists in this visualization, by the way. When you do it this way, it only exists in this viz. It doesn't exist anywhere else in the dashboard, and it certainly doesn't get pushed back down to the data module. So this is a really useful thing for point-in-time grouping and filtering on visualizations only. But if you want to build something that's reproducible within the dashboard itself or across dashboards and reports, you're going to want to use the techniques I showed earlier uh, that take place in the data module. So those are your grouping options in Cognos Analytics. I hope this video was useful for you. If it was, do me a favor, click the like, comment, and subscribe down below so you won't miss another one of these tips going forward. And uh, stay tuned to Super Data Brothers because we got a lot more of this coming to you in the future. All right, stay safe, everybody out there, and I'll see you next time.